When New York's Cotton Club was in its heyday, it featured a show called Rhythmania, and it featured the song the Imperial Quartet now sings, Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. I don't want you, but I hate to lose you. You've got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. I forgive you, cause I can't forget you. You've got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. I ought to cross you off my list, but when you come knocking at my door, fate seems to give my heart a twist, and I come running back for more. I should hate you, but I guess I love you. You've got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. And after running around yesterday, it's nice being back in the good old kitchen. And here's a kitchen counter thrift haul for you. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, the estate sale trip, you'll recognize a few things. But before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... Actually, it doesn't look much like coffee. There's a lot of cream in there, isn't there? Well, maybe that's just froth. Yeah, there's coffee under there. Uh, and two ginger snaps today. I'm breaking it wide open. It's the weekend. Look out. Uh, I bought cups and saucers and plates a while back, and I think a few subscribers told me this was Blue Haven, or Blue Heaven. Blue Haven, I think they said, by Steubenville. Oh, I don't remember. I'll have to go look it up again. But it's pretty mid-century stuff. It's not listed yet, but it soon will be. I like it. First thing I'm going to do, before it makes me any more nervous than I already am, is dismantle this pyramid because we don't want to break any of these okay and this marble is not very forgiving all right that's not quite as symmetrical as I had it but it'll well, why don't we start with them probably made by Hazel Atlas in the uh, late 50s to early 60s pink and black very atomic there and probably uh, cream, uh, I'm sorry, sour cream probably came in these. I certainly remember the ones that we had in the 70s that had those two little naked people on it and it said love. Anybody remember those? I, I do. Well, I have a set of six of them. They're not marked on the bottom, so this could be when Hazel Atlas was taken over by Continental Can, but they are in like new condition. Pink and black, so mid-century. Yeah, I like those a lot. And a few people have been waiting for me to list those, I think. Uh, let's see. Also made by Hazel Atlas over here is the Capri Dot. And this is still a very popular pattern. These are the little 3-inch... I'm not sure how many ounces that is. Uh, tumblers, glasses there. And I have a set of uh, six of those Capri Dot. I guess you could see pattern pretty well. 
So we're definitely mid-century right in this area. Yeah. And then we're going to move over to some opalescent glass uh, and a few pieces with uranium, 1930s uranium candlesticks here. A nice pair with sort of an optic pattern in the bottoms. I am just beginning to thin out my uranium collection a little bit. I think I, I've already shown you some of it. You want to have another peek? This isn't even half of it. Um, this is about, oh, maybe one third. <laughs> well, I have a few more cabinets full and some boxes. So it's time to start letting some of it go. And that's what I'm going to do now. So these are up for sale. And then over there's the Indi Indiana glass, uh, little nappy candy dish pebble twiggy leaf dish thing. A lot of you recognize that and were able to chime in uh, in the comments a few weeks back. Now, unless I tell you, there are no chips or cracks in anything and everything is clean. You know, I'm um, not fussy or picky, but I am a discerning person when, when it comes to shopping. So I steer clear of things that are really filthy, hard to clean, have dishwasher damage, major chips or cracks. There might be a flea bite here or there, but I'll tell you if that's the case. And so far, everything you've seen is in really good shape. I believe this to be a piece of Jefferson glass. Uh, it's sort of a candy dish here, really a footed nappy, I suppose you could call it. It does sit up on a nice little foot there. And of course, these are mold lines, which is part of the production. And if you're getting kind of a blue tint to this, it's white opalescent glass, but it really has that sort of blue rinse. It reminds me of a, an old lady. Remember when they had that really white hair and they would get blue rinses back in the, I don't know, does anybody still get that done? Kind of like a blue rinse. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and so that's what that is. Now this does down here have a tiny little flea bite on the pedestal. I'll let you see it. It's right there. It's more felt than seen, but I want you to know that. That's a little uh, blob of glass there when, uh, when the piece came out of the mold. All right, we'll slide that back. And then from the estate sale, Yesterday, here is the wonderful uh, candy dish with lid. And just amazing that with all these points, there are no cracks. Now, you might have noticed when I put the black light on, uh, uranium in the top, but there is no uranium in the, in the bottom. And when you put the lid on, I mean, you can't, you don't even, you can't even tell. Now, uh, there's a couple possibilities here. Could it be a marriage? It could be. I don't think it is, though, and I'll tell you why, and a lot of people may say right away, oh, a marriage. If you're not familiar with that term, a marriage would be two or more pieces put together that didn't start off, start out life together, such as uh, a 1930s mahogany mirror stuck on an 1880s oak washstand. That would be a marriage. The thing about these is many companies made these glass dishes uh, for many, quite a few years, the 20s and into the 30s, and sometimes the glass bases were bought up by either uh, Farber Brothers in uh, Brooklyn or Chrome Craft. You've seen it. They would make those uh, uh, pierced metal chrome uh, baskets to fit these down into and whatnot. And so, uh, but then the companies also sometimes manufactured lids. Now that lid fits on there perfectly. And I have seen pictures of this base with this lid. There's just no uranium in the bottom. But boy, is it nice. And I was happy to find that at the estate sale because uh, of its condition. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Remember in yesterday's video, I uh, said they wanted 
uh, $500 for all of that depression glass on the table? Well, I forgot I was wrong. A lady was admiring just the green uranium and she asked for a price on all of the green uranium that was on the table and the lady calculated it up and it came to over $600 and she said, well, I'll let you have the green glass for 500 and the lady said, no way. She was kind of put off by that. So it wasn't $500 for that whole table. It was just $500 for the uranium. Uh, maybe the price went down today, but I didn't go back to the, uh, I didn't go back to the estate sale, but they can charge whatever they want. Now there's a Fenton piece back there. That's that silver crest with the pink on the inside and my light is washing it out. It really is a pretty pink color as you can see. I took my bandage off. You can see I still have a little bit of a scrape there after three weeks. Uh, but I cannot use my thumb. I have no use of my thumb and it's still pretty painful right in here, but I am able to use these fingers and so I'm feeling better. It's just taken me a long time to get there, but thank you everybody. I so appreciate your kindness. I really do. Uh, okay, so you don't want me to ramble, ramble on about that. There's the... Why is the light... I really want you to see this, but my, my lighting is not cooperating. Well, okay, it doesn't want to cooperate. It's just too much light on there. You can check out the uh, auction photos, that's a little bit better, on the eBay site. The link to my eBay store is always in the description box below. You've seen the Jeanette Sunflower Cake Plate many times. It comes in green, pink, maybe Delphite, I don't remember. Uh, let's just stick to green and pink for now. Uh, these were made, as I said, in the Depression. And this was a premium that came with uh, buying a, a certain brand of flour ba uh, to bake with. Three feet, this is the pink one in good shape without any chips or cracks in it. And it's got that sunflower pattern on there. And then, uh, let's see, a piece of Northwood glass back here in this beaded pat beaded beaded panel pattern. Now that, let's move this up. This is a good time to talk about the difference between Vaseline glass and uranium glass. Okay, you guys already know this. That is Vaseline glass. These are uranium. Pretty much these days, because of online auctions, you hear just it all being dumped into the same category, but the die-hard, tried-and-true old-time collectors are only basically considering this Vaseline glass because uh, it ha the Vaseline glass typically has more of the yellowish tint than the green. Mm -hmm. Because petroleum jelly really does look more uh, this color, right? than this. I mean, if you've got green petroleum jelly in your medicine cabinet, you might want to check the uh, exp expiration date. So this is what really would be called Vaseline glass. And of course, it's got uranium, so it, as you see, it glows under the black light. That probably dates to about 1910, right there in my hands. So a real antique. I took the price tag off of that and found the embossed name Fenton, so we know it's after uh, 1971. A nice cranberry vase in a... I know this makes you so nervous. I'm only using four fingers and I'm dangling over the uh, granite countertop. I haven't broken anything yet, I promise you. Uh, this is a nice, I believe, eight inches cranberry glass vase with a sort of quilted diamond effect, which may or may not show up in the light. Of course it's Fenton so it's going to be a quality piece. And it's clean, it doesn't have any cloudy water deposits. I don't know, but whether you'll see... no, and I can't, I don't have the ability to make it focus, but it is embossed Fenton on the bottom so we'll, we'll put that back there. 
Okay, so it's all listed in the old curiosity shot and ready for you. Let's do an honorable mention. There's my wonderful Anchor Hocking 1930s Manhattan glass. I love it. Boy, it's Art Deco. It's sophisticated, right? And uh, I, ha I am starting, as I said, casually starting a little collection, which means I'll start picking it up when I see it, but I'm fussy about it because this stuff is really prone to chipping. These little wings on either side tend to chip as well as the ribs all up and down the sides. But it's pretty stuff, and remember, Anchor Hawking did uh, a reissue called Park Avenue in the late 80s. So the measurements are different, and some of the, some of the forms are different. It, so it's worth uh, studying it if you really just want to collect the stuff from the 30s. So that I'm keeping. And we'll wait until next autumn to uh, part with the amber plates. These are octagonal, as I said, and I'll pull these forward. Uh, a stack of 12 of them. And really, amber plates on top of a black countertop don't show up very well. But I did wash all of these, and I'm having a hard time picking one up without the use of my thumb, but I'll do the best I can. So it's really pretty amber glass. They're nice plates. They are fi fire polished, and we have nice polished uh, bottoms here, as you can see, a sign of quality. And it was nice to find a set of 12 of those, really to be used, uh, I guess, as dessert plates in the fall. Wouldn't pumpkin pie look nice on that? All right, I'll back back up again, let you see it all. Yes, okay, so that's about all for now. I want to thank everybody for watching. You guys are fantastic. Have I told you that? I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.